Hey, how's it going you guys? I'm coming to you from my new living room where I'm just sitting on my bed that is still under construction because it's the only piece of furniture in here so far, uh, aside from that chair over there. But uh, So I just want to apologize for the echo. I think it's probably pretty echoey in here, but that's because there's just like nothing in here, so the sound's just kind of going crazy around everywhere. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is my bed frame. It's all sanded and ready for stain. And uh, this is my uh, outside my apartment. So yeah, uh, full apartment tour now. I don't really need to give you a full apartment tour, but at least a tour of my new um, modeling room, which is back there. Uh, I'll do that later once that's all sorted, but it's still not quite yet. Anyway, I wanted to do some more uh, Q&A questions today as I got off work a little bit early today. So I thought it'd be a good time just shoot some more Q&A questions. So here we go. The first one is going to be from Anderson. And Anderson asked, uh, could you tell us some more about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, blonde, I'm male, I'm American, and I'm somewhere between the ages of 26 and 28 years old, and I'm an English teacher in South Korea. I'm engaged, and I have two cats, and uh, yeah, I think pretty much all of that you guys already knew, and other than that, I don't know what you really want to know. I've already explained my history with Gundam as well, so anyway, anything else you want to know about me, you can just ask me, I guess. Uh, if it's something that I don't want to answer, I'll just tell you I don't want to answer that, but if you have any sp specific questions, something you want to know about me, I'm willing to answer that. Sure, just give me a, give me a message. Next, Yugi Unboxer888 asked exactly these words. How the mmm is your damn hair so freaking amazing all the time? Um, I don't know, I'm, I don't think my hair is all that great. As you can see, I got a little bit of a very long forehead going on there, and my hair is, I don't know, nothing really that special, I think. I Here's something about me, is that uh, when I was a university student, I actually used to have long hair, like, down to here. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, I've, always skateboarded and then like in high school I was in a metal band for a while so I just had long hair for a while and then just in university I just didn't cut it for like four years so it was like down to here um, and then finally I cut it a little bit after I came to Korea because Korean people were mistaking me for a girl all the time and it was just really uncomfortable so finally cut my hair and yeah I think it's alright it's better now I don't know I don't really like to talk about it that much because it's just hair. I don't really like talking about outward appearances all that much. When people, a lot of Korean people like to compliment or comment on your appearance here and it's a little bit uncomfortable. People will tell you like, oh, you don't look so good today. Are you sick? Something like that. Like where like in the West then people will think that's kind of rude, but here it's just kind of just like the culture. And you get used to it. I don't know. But anyway, I still don't really like it when people Tell me something about like, oh, that's a nice shirt. Okay, I don't know what, how to answer that. Okay, thanks. Anyway, his second question is, could you record your building process? Uh, well, yeah, at the time when he asked this question, I hadn't done much videos of that, but uh, as some of you guys probably know that I am doing the Gumpla building series that's sort of ongoing where I'm basically just like covering the steps, not really showing a whole lot of actual building because I think that's probably a little bit boring but I will be continuing that series and also doing more kind of building and or tutorial kind of videos in the future so yeah there will be plenty more of that in the future that's good next flash x 7 asks how do you go about your projects as in steps for painting layout etc and once again I think we've basically just been covering that in the Gumpo building videos I basically um, just snap build the kit just to see how everything works all together then figure out um, kind of what things I need to modify or change and then um, disassemble the kit for doing any sort of modifications and then priming, painting, detail painting and then decals and um, actually um, before that uh, panel lining then decals then top coat and that's pretty much it. So. I haven't really done a whole lot of weathering, but weathering is something that I'm going to start getting into here pretty soon. I want to start experimenting with some weathering techniques and stuff. Um, next, 
Bob the Builder asks, what modified kits and from what model are your favorite? Uh, as I've mentioned quite a few times recently, Naoki is a Japanese modeler who is probably uh, my favorite modeler. And then there's also a couple of builders here in Korea that I quite like. Uh, one of them is uh, Sori Kim, or he's also known as Sori Factory. Uh, I think is kind of one of his names. Anyway, he's one of the people that I'm actually going to be doing an interview with later this year, uh, not later, later this month. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing him, so I'm really looking forward to that, and I hope you guys are too, because it should be really, really cool. We're going to go up to Seoul and see his studio space where he works, um, because he uh, is an artist as well, uh, or at least he's uh, studying art, and so that'll be really cool to talk with him. Some other builders, um, I don't know, I'm sure there are some that are slipping my mind that I just can't really think of at the moment, but there's plenty of uh, amazing modelers out there, and uh, I think the doing the featured artist section at the end of the Gumplin News videos has been really cool and fun for me, because then um, basically in the past what I've done is just kind of going through the blogs, and like when I see a kit I like or something, I'll like admire it, maybe save some photos just for reference. Um, but I haven't really, I never really check out like the modeler themselves a whole lot, but then like now that I've started doing the feature artist section of the Gumplin News videos, I've been trying to like look into the artist a little bit more, so that's been pretty cool. And I definitely recommend people do that and just if when you see stuff you like online, like try to find the artist's blog or um, whatever they're using to share their work and like try to support them, share their work, stuff like that. Then he also asks, uh, what type of shading and plot plating do you prefer? As in like heavy or light shading and then like simple plot plate um, details or more elaborate stuff. Uh, basically for shading, uh, for me personally, I haven't done any shading at all just because I haven't been using an airbrush yet. But in terms of like other people's stuff, I like just kind of light shading uh, stuff when it's too heavily shaded. I think uh, it just doesn't really look that good. I think probably most people would agree that uh, shading is something that you don't want to be too heavy. Uh, so just kind of light shading. Uh, and actually a lot of times I do kind of prefer just like a more of a flat look on stuff, just like very clean. So not a lot of like shading and like color variance in the parts. I mean like tone variance, I guess. Uh, basically just kind of flat stuff, but I don't know, depends. Depends on the artist, and it all, if, if it looks good, then I like it, I don't know. And then for plot plating, uh, again, I haven't really done really a whole lot of like plot plating myself, just for like small details, just very little. And once again, just depends on the build. Some builds I really like with a lot of plot plating on there, like uh, I think in episode 3 or 4 of Gunplay News, I talked about a Master Grade Turn X that had tons of plot play all over it. I really like that build, but then other builds I think definitely go overboard with the plot play. So uh, it just depends on the build. If it fits the build, if it suits the build, then uh, I like it. But you know, it is easy to go overboard, and um, you know, some kits do can look a little bit plain, but. It's pretty rare that I ever look at a kit and think, wow, that's too plain. If it's done well, I mean, even a very like simple like kit with not a lot of details can look really good. So uh, I think it's much easier to ruin a kit by putting on too much plot play. Next, William Lin asks, what do you do with all the builds? Well, uh, because I'm living abroad and because up until recently I've basically been moving like once a year, I don't really have like a permanent space to display my kits and stuff like that. So basically for the past couple of years, um, usually after I build and complete kits, once I get a couple, maybe two, three, four kits completed, I'll just package them up in a box and send them home to my parents' house just kind of to be stored there for the time being just because I, A, like I said, moving a lot at least once a year and just um, just don't have really a lot of space or any kind of permanent like proper display space for those so most of the time they're just getting shipped uh, back home to be stored there and uh, yeah. Next Felipe Cuevas asks uh, do you build something other than Gundams? Uh, as I've said before not really but if you guys have seen any of my recent uh, unboxings and I think maybe in my trip from Japan I got a few too. Recently I have got uh, some other stuff, like a couple uh, Muv Love kits, a 
couple of Evangelion kits. I did build the one and I reviewed that. And then also got a Frame Arms kit and a Nobunaga the Fool. So I do have a few other kits and I guess I also built that, um, what was that other kit as well? I built another non-Gundam one. But um, it's mostly Gundam and because most other stuff uh, is not really appealing to me, although there is a few. So I have recently got a few, although I haven't built all that many. But in the future, like over the course of this year, you'll probably see some more of that stuff, some more non-Gundam stuff just being built and reviewed by me sometime later. But um, I'm open to other things other than Gundams, but still basically mostly robots. I'm not really so much interested in like ships or like trucks, trains, submarines, tanks, that sort of stuff is still not really uh, interesting to me. Some stuff I'm really amazed at what other people can do, but I'm just not really interested in building that myself. Next, Gundam Joe uh, asks, do you have a favorite non-Gunpla model? Well, this is kind of very related to the previous question. A favorite non-Gunpla model? Like I said, I, like I just finished saying, I haven't really built a whole lot of non-Gunpla models. Uh, the Kotobukiya Evangelion that I just recently built was really cool. Um, it's not really perfect, but I think, as I said in that review, I thought that uh, just the design of it, the Evangelion is not really suited too well for like plastic models, so although I think that kit uh, did very good, I think it's just hard to make a really like perfect Evangelion kit. Uh, and otherwise, like I said, I just haven't really built that many, so there are a few Frame Arms kits and like Super Robot Wars kits that I really like that I haven't built, but I, I've seen other people's builds of them and they're pretty cool. The next he asks, if you could choose the next kit release, what would it be, what grade, and why? And I guess I would have to say, uh, I'm just gonna go with the Hazel, and I think uh, probably Master Grade or RE. I think that's something that would probably be a little bit more suited for the RE because it's just kind of like a, a side story, and it's not really in any animated form, so it's probably something that would be more likely to come out as an RE. But I would like to have it in a master grade, and it could probably, I mean, it could probably use the frame of the uh, Gundam Mark II. So, I mean, they wouldn't really have to do a whole lot for that, I guess. And uh, why? Because I just really love, as I've said on many occasions, that I love all the suit designs from Advance of Zeta. So I think that would also be cool because then they could release either um, other versions, in whether it's standard release or P Bandai releases of like the Advanced Hazel or the uh, Hazel 2 or just some kind of other versions because there's plenty of versions out there. And there's a lot of suits from uh, that series that I would like to see in model kit form, but who knows if we're ever going to see that. Next, he asked if you could change an existing kit, what would you change? And this is really hard, and I've really been kind of wrecking my brain on this, how to answer that. I don't know, really. I, there's not really any kit that comes to mind immediately as something that I would just like really want changed. I mean, pretty much any kit I can think of like some small thing that I'd like to have changed because there's not really any such thing as a perfect kit from anything that I've built. So there's always going to be some little things that I would like changed on certain kits, but just at the moment, nothing is really coming to mind as something that I would really want changed about any one particular kit. Um, so sorry, I just can't really answer that, I think. And then the last question is also kind of very difficult to answer. He asks, so what's your favorite modeling or painting technique? Uh, and I guess he means like which uh, kind of technique and then all the kinds of techniques is my favorite. I don't know, recently I was just talking with someone about this that I guess maybe seam line removal, uh, just because it's very satisfying, it's not very difficult, and it's uh, a night and day difference for me in terms of uh, like the finished product of a kit. If you're gonna be like painting and finishing a kit, having a seam line or not having a seam line is gonna make a huge difference in just the look of it. It just looks so much better uh, after you've gotten rid of the seam lines. And like I said, it's not a very difficult technique to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. And so I think that's just one step that's really satisfying for me. Um, 
Decals is kind of a love-hate relationship for me. I love doing decals just because I love the look that you get from them. But of course it is very arduous and a little bit boring and just takes a long time, especially if you're doing like a ver kit when it has tons of, de of decals. Or just like, I don't know, even not ver but like when I built the clear uh, HGUC Benchy and uh, in the unicorn mode and destroy mode, I put a lot of decals on those just because I really loved the gold decals that I got for those and just like putting a lot of decals on a 1144 scale kit is even harder because they're just really small so uh, I do like doing decals but uh, I also dislike it and the same goes for panel lining too panel lining is um, just kind of a pain for me sometimes but I do I mean it is totally necessary and I do really like the look that you get from it but it just can be a little bit boring at times Next, Lorenzo Giacomello, I'm probably mispronouncing that, sorry, asks, uh, what are your top five Gundam series? Well, as I said before, it's going to be probably turn A, then uh, 8th MS team, then Gundam Unicorn, then maybe after that, it's kind of difficult, then maybe Zeta, and then the last, maybe G Gundam. <laughs> I'm, I might get a little uh, flack about that from some UC elitists out there, but uh, as much as I love UC and uh, I think that UC is the best timeline, uh, I also I just like G Gundam just for its goofiness. I mean, like sometimes I want a Gundam series that's just not all totally serious all the time, and G Gundam I think is just really fun to watch. It's like watching Dragon Ball Z uh, without all like the really long filler and it's got Gundams and I mean they're pretty cool there's some really silly ones in there but I mean they're pretty cool so I, I like that series and actually the old Master Grade God Gundam I think was my first Master Grade that I ever built I believe I remember that kit was pretty cool but that's one kit that I definitely uh, think could use a 2.0 treatment um, that and Master Gundam and Spiegel Gundam and the rest of the team of from G Gundam, I kind of hope that they do some sort of new release in Master Grade form like those. Like they recently did the um, Gundam Wing kits in Master Grade for like the EW versions. I wish they'd do something like that for the G Gundam kits. That'd be really cool. And I, I think that's probably bound to happen sometime within the next three, four, five years. I mean, it's gonna happen someday, I just don't know when, but I, I, it's gonna happen. Then Bit Crossfire one asks, has there ever been a moment where you think, I have to stop for a while because the funds for this can be draining? Um, kind of. I never really think that, I just do it. <laughs> if I don't really have a lot of money, then yeah, there's some times when I just don't buy stuff because I know I just don't really have a lot of money at the moment. Uh, especially like there was times when I was getting ready to leave Japan, like at the end of the time when I was living in Japan. Uh, of course, it's just really tempting to buy stuff all the time because it's just cheap there. But around the time when I was getting ready to leave, at the end of my time in Japan, I did like a two-week cycling trip just before I left. So like I especially just uh, needed to save money for that and just leaving and moving, to, moving back to Korea and just uh, everything else. So just, yeah, there has been times when I've had to um, just keep myself from buying kits, but um, I don't really think in my head like I have to stop for a while because I've always also had plenty of kits around, like I've always had enough of a backlog that I always have stuff to work on, but uh, I don't have to stop the hobby at all, but I just have to stop buying stuff sometimes, yeah, sure. Next, uh, G1 Fanboy asks, are you interested in any non-Gundam robots or mechs, for example, Transformers, Evangelion, uh, Zoids, etc.? And this seems to be a little bit of a theme in this episode, that people asking me about non-Gundam stuff uh, that I like. And as I mentioned before, and on many occasions, I love Evangelion. It's one of my favorite anime series, probably. I like it maybe just as much, or if not more, than Gundam, actually. I'm definitely a huge fan of Evangelion. Uh, the kits, uh, I don't know because I've only built like one and a half of them, so uh, the kits are okay. Uh, the series itself and the uh, designs of the 
kind of robots in that series are definitely very awesome, I think. Uh, Transformers, not really so much. I've never really been all that into Transformers. Like the recent movies, I've seen them uh, and they're okay. Uh, I don't really like them all that much, especially the fourth one. I just was, I left the theater feeling almost angry after watching that one and I vowed never to watch another Michael Bay movie again after that. And then uh, Zo Zoids, uh, I watched the uh, that one Zoids series that was on Toonami back when like Gundam was on and I liked it like then but I've never really been a huge fan of the robots all that much. Uh, I just prefer like the humanoid stuff and Gundam a lot more than uh, the Zoids stuff and then there are, there are other series of robots stuff that I like, like frame arms, and I do like the armored core stuff a little bit. Um, sometimes it depends on the design, I don't know. I used to play some of the robot, uh, some of the armored core games sometimes, but I just kind of got out of video games mostly uh, these days, so I guess that's probably why I'm not all that much interested in armored core anymore, because I'm just not playing the games. Next he asked, have you ever watched Helsing? Um, no, I haven't. I know what it is. I mean, I know it's a series. I don't know anything about it. Like I said, I'm not really all that into anime other than Evangelion and um, Gundam. There are a lot of movies that I like, but in terms of series, there's very few that I've actually seen um, because I'm just not really interested in a lot of like magic-y kind of swords and magic and other kind of that kind of stuff, I don't know. I guess Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z is another uh, series that I did like. Especially Dragon Ball more than Dragon Ball Z, but uh, yeah, Helsing, no, sorry, I, I haven't. And his last question is, how did you get into Gunpla? I've answered that uh, plenty of times already, so. Next, Kuri Okami asks, uh, do you have any tips for making custom parts? Yes, uh, my tips would be just to look around online. There's a lot of really good information either on YouTube, here on YouTube, or just in blogs. There's a lot of cool stuff you can find. Uh, sadly, a lot of the, like, the really best stuff is going to be in Japanese, like especially here on YouTube. There's a video series called Plamos Kuru, and that's a really good series to watch. It's in Japanese, but I think if you watch it, you can kind of get what's going on. Uh, that's a good series to watch. Otherwise, I mean, other modelers here on YouTube have some great uh, stuff and I've been trying to work on a, a playlist here on my channel of some good um, kind of tutorials that I've found. I, have, I haven't gotten all that many in there yet, it's something I've been meaning to work on more in the future, but just as like a resource for people of just like a playlist of videos that are not my own but just like other people's videos that they've made that are really helpful uh, for customizing or whatever. So you can see that playlist uh, on my channel. Uh, there's only a few videos in there now, but I do plan on adding a lot more in there as I find them. But basically the best advice that I can give for making custom parts is just to try it. I mean, just try some things. Try what works for you and you'll, you'll find some things that work and some things that don't work. I think one thing to keep in mind is uh, just make sure that if you're making custom parts for a kit, just make sure that the aesthetic kind of works. So like. If you're working with a kit, let's say for example, a kit that's really kind of curvy and doesn't have a whole lot of details on the on the armor, let's say for example the cubile. If you're making a cubile and you want to make like some custom add-on parts like on the binders or something like that, and you make something that's like really blocky, it's not going to fit well on there because the uh, cubile is so like organic and smooth and curvy looking, and then you add like this big blocky shape on there, it's just going to look bad. It doesn't fit the design at all and it's just going to look really obvious. Uh, the other thing of looking really obvious is, is that if you're going to be doing any kit bashing, I think that's one thing to keep in mind is that like when you're just like slapping parts onto a kit, when they look really obviously like from other parts, it's going to look a little bit jarring. Like if you took, as a good example, if you took like the um, like side, those kind of booster binders on the sides of the leg of the Shinanju and like put those onto like a Rezzel kit because um, you think like, oh, okay, I want to add like some extra like boosters on the sides of the legs of my Rezzel. Well, it's going to look really out of place because the Rezzel is very angular and the Shinanju, that part is like really curvy. This is going to look really out of place and really obvious. Anyone who looks at that is going to see it and see like really obviously, oh, that's just a piece 
taken from the Shenanju and just slapped onto a Rezzle. It just um, looks a little bit tacky in my opinion, uh, so just keep that in mind. The other thing that may or may not be important to you, it's kind of important for me when I'm thinking about how to customize a kit or something, is um, what is canon. Now, like, what that I mean is just like considering the story. So if you're taking like a UC kit, if you're taking like, uh, for example, a new Gundam, and you want to give a new Gundam like a big GN sword, it doesn't really make sense that a new Gundam from the UC timeline would be using a GN sword from the 00 timeline, it just doesn't make sense. You could make it like look really cool, and I think that is totally possible, but like if you are concerned about keeping things kind of canon, then you know, that's something you don't want to think about. Another thing would be something like taking the original Gundam and giving it like a beam Gatling gun. Now at that at that time in the UC timeline there was no beam Gatling gun like made yet. So uh, it's just gonna look a little bit jarring, maybe. Again, if you can make it look good, then I mean, it's gonna look good either way, but it's just something that if you want it to be canon, you should think about that. It's that like, obviously in that time, in the year 0079, in the UC timeline, there was no beam gambling on. So something like that, for an example, just some things to keep in mind. Those are what the things that I think about when I'm trying to plan like what I wanna do with a custom or something. Next, Devin Wiley asks, uh, what is your favorite kit or figure? Uh, I couldn't really say I have a favorite figure. Okay, yes I could. My favorite figure would probably be uh, in the fixed figuration line, either the Deep Striker or the Hummingbird, uh, which are kind of very similar. Uh, those are really awesome. And I am getting the, I got the Converge version of the Deep Striker. And actually I have the fixed figuration Deep Striker that my Japanese friend gave me. That's really awesome. It's still in the box. I haven't actually ever taken it out and put it together yet, but I'm kind of scared to. But uh, yeah, I got the Converge of the Deep Striker as well, which I do like quite a bit. And then I also ordered the Converge version of the Hummingbird, which is coming out pretty soon. And I hope maybe someday in the future we might see an RE100 release of uh, the Hummingbird, which would that would be really awesome. I would love that, but um, we'll see. I don't know. But anyway, uh, back to your question, my favorite kit. Um, in previous videos, I've talked a lot about other kits that I really like. The Master Grade Goof Custom. I do really like uh, this one. I haven't mentioned, I don't think, but I do really like pretty much any of the Master Grade Zaku 2.0s, which would be like uh, just the normal Zaku 2, the high mobility type, the Zaku Cannon that are using the 2.0 mold. I think those are really awesome kits. And also, I, I really like the Camper as well. Uh, that's a pretty cool kit, even though it's a little bit old. I, I still, uh, I really enjoyed that kit when I made it. And plenty of other stuff that I've built. Uh, the XS, and even though it's kind of a brick, it doesn't, can't really do a whole lot with it. I think that's just like a really awesome, intimidating looking kit. Uh, the uh, S Gundam, uh, BST came out as an online exclusive, I think like last year, and I was really on the fence about getting that. The price just seemed like just a little bit too high for me, uh, but that will, did look like a really awesome kit, and I really wish they would have made that a standard release, but oh well, maybe if I find one someday, that's one master grade I would really like to get if I can find it at a good price. Then next he asks, what is the custom you are most satisfied with? That's probably going to be um, the Gundam 04 and 05 that I did like two years ago. Didn't really do a whole lot of customizing on that. Basically, I just added some detail parts just like everywhere on the kit. It's like some uh, bars and some like extra armor parts and stuff like that here. I did add like some beam cannons on the shield. I'll put, I have the pictures here so you can see those. I added some beam cannons on the shield and I modified the beam rifles a little bit. Uh, and just kind of changed up the color scheme a little bit, especially on the weapons, on like their main weapons, the huge beam launcher and the uh, uh, giant Gatling gun. Uh, I was really pleased with those just because it was just basically some minor things that I just basically added and subtracted here and there, but those came out looking really good. I think I was really pleased uh, with those kits. And his last question is, what is your occupation besides Gunpla? I'm a public school English teacher here in Korea. 
Next, Ethan Xavier asks, can you do a video on step-by-step -step how to paint and the things you need? Uh, well, I am doing that at the moment, so I hope you're watching that and enjoying that. Although the painting that I'm showing you how to do it is pretty limited. I'm only showing how to uh, use spray cans and then just hand painting using enamels. So that's only a few techniques out of the many and they're really not even the best techniques. I mean, hand painting is okay. But um, uh, spraying using spray cans is really only if you aren't able to use a uh, airbrush. Really airbrushing is going to be the best way to go. I don't have an airbrush yet and it's going to be quite a while before I would feel comfortable basically doing any airbrush tutorials. I just need the experience first. But there are a lot of YouTubers who do have a lot of really great airbrushing tutorials out there. So just make sure you check them out and just like see what other people have to say on the subject. I'm not an expert, but there are a lot of people who are uh, very knowledgeable in uh, painting and not even airbrushing, I mean, other hand, uh, uh, hand painting and all kinds of stuff you can find on YouTube. And he also asks, what other places do you recommend we go shopping for Gumpla in Japan? Uh, other than Yorobashi Camera and um, Mandarake are probably the best. But there is another huge camera store called Big Camera, which is very similar to Yodabashi, but I found that they just don't really have as much uh, in stock usually as Yodabashi has, and their prices tend to be a little bit higher, so uh, it's not really all that much recommended. There are a lot of other just secondhand stores, uh, and new stores as well, I mean, this, but there's a lot of secondhand stores similar to Mandarake. One would be uh, a store called Book Off, and Book Off has a few different kind of other versions of the store. One is hard off and one is hobby off. Uh, book off obviously focuses mostly on books, but sometimes they do have some gunpla there as well. Otherwise, hard off is more for like um, other things other than books. They'll usually have like a lot of like musical music equipment and like uh, camera and video stuff and just kind of household products and things like that. And they might also have a section of Gunpla stuff as well, but still, again, not all that much. And then, uh, there are not very many in Japan, but if you can find one, there are some uh, stores called Hobby Off, which obviously those are going to focus mostly on hobby stuff, so that would be uh, the best bet if you can find one. Uh, those would be a lot of uh, plastic model stuff, as well as like trading cars and figures and all kind of normal Japanese hobby kind of stuff. So. Uh, I would recommend checking out those places. And next, Simon asks, can you tell us some tips on painting detailing kits? Uh, once again, as I just mentioned, I am doing the video series uh, on that right now, but I do recommend you check out some other YouTubers for that. And just in the future, I'll do more, but uh, yeah, just if you want to check out some more stuff about that now, just check out other people. Next, Kelvin Lee asks, uh, what do you think the next long overdue grunt for MG will be? And I would say probably the Jagan. Uh, as I mentioned in the recent Gunpla News video, we've seen all sorts of different versions of the Jagan come out recently in uh, HG form. And it's something that people have been wanting in Master Grid form for a long time. So I think after the release of the new Gundam and the Sazabi, and um, a lot of uh, we got the Geradoga uh, just one or two years ago as well. So I think, I don't know, a lot of stuff like from that era has come out, but still no Jagan. So I don't know, I think the Jagan could be a Master Grade Grunt release coming soon. Then he asks, what's your favorite non-Bandai third-party kit so far? Um, that would probably have to be the uh, Model Comprehend High New. I had the Model Comprehend High New in the uh, version Wu Yudong colors. If you want to see the review of that, I did like a two-part review on that uh, way back when, near the very beginning of my channel, almost a year ago, I guess now. And uh, I did really like that kit. It's pretty cool, the colors they did for it, it being like pre-painted and like some of the effect parts were really cool. I have the Ellen Kasatria and I have posted a work in progress for that months ago and it's, it hasn't progressed any farther since then because basically after I just finished all the inner frame and everything then I just kind of put it away to be finished later and I would like to get back to it pretty soon but although it has a lot of problems and it's a very not the easiest kit to work on it does look really good so I mean that's what's important so 
after all the work, it is a really awesome looking kit. So when it comes down to it, that's basically what you want in the end, right? So that would probably be one of my uh, favorite non-Bandai third-party kits. Uh, I do really like the look of that Kshatriya, or as they call it, Kastrisha. Next, Jeff Yang asks, how come you don't do more Gunpla reviews? Um, well, Jeff, how come you don't do more Gunpla reviews? No, uh, just kidding. Uh, I do some, I mean, I don't know how many you want me to do. I usually put out a video every like two or three days, so that's quite a lot. And they're not all reviews, obviously. Uh, but I guess maybe he's asking like, why don't I do more um, Gunpla reviews for like stuff like as soon as it comes out, similar to like what Prime 92 does, or at least used to do until recently. And I would just say that I just, A, I'm not sponsored like she was, and B, I'm just not really financially able to buy every single kit that comes out, and so, and I just don't want every single kit that comes out, so, yeah, I don't know. I do as many uh, YouTube Gumpler reviews as I feel like doing. I hope it's enough for you, Jeff. And next, Sam Yang asks, would you recommend a good site for ordering Gunpla? Yeah, probably HLJ is probably going to be your best, but uh, I've seen some videos where like uh, people were comparing the prices with like HLJ compared to some like North American based stores. It depends on where you live. Where I live here in Korea, the shipping is not that high. It's still a little bit high. I wish they offered um, uh, SAL or like surface mail shipping, but they don't. So. Um, Anyway, I live just across the water here in Korea, so the shipping isn't too bad for me. But I know if you're living in America or somewhere farther away, uh, the shipping from HLJ can be a little bit expensive. But when you compare that to the jacked up prices that um, maybe like some American based stores would charge, I don't know, you just have to check it out. Uh, if you're living in America, I don't even know what site to recommend just because I never look at them. Uh, Sorry, uh, other than HLJ, um, you can always try Amazon as well, but again, that just depends on your location, I think, and what's available. Then next he asks, what are your top five Gumpla kit, uh, any grade or scale? i um, kind of answered this before, I'm just, these might not be exactly my top five, I would really have to do a really in-depth pro and con comparison for these, but just to name five off the top of my head, Master Grade Goof Custom, the Master Grade Zaku Cannon, the HGUC Silver Bullet, the Master Grade Unicorn in all its variations, and the Master Grade Shinanju. And next, 100 Seasons, very clever, Yakushiki, I got it, uh, asked, what drew you into building Gunpla? As I said before, just watching uh, Gundam Wing and other series on Toonami way back when. Then Michael Menezes asks, do you have a list of what we will be seeing from you in the future for third-party kits? Um, no, I don't have a list. Uh, I can just tell you right now what some of the third-party kits that I have. I, like I said, I plan on finishing the Ellen Kshatriya, and I plan on working on the Mechanicore Kasi Gundam, then after that the Mechanicore Penelope, then after that the Mechanicore uh, version of the Deep Striker, the Teeth Stormer, they're calling it. Though, but those are all really huge kits that are going to take a long time, so I don't know, you know how long that's going to be before the next one. Other third-party kits, I think those are the only ones that I have or have on pre-order at the moment. I would like to get the uh, Model Comprehend SD Deep Striker, um, because I'm not really a huge fan of uh, SD kits, but I am a huge fan of the Deep Striker, so I do kind of want to get that, so just like eventually when I have the Teeth Stormer, I can have like that next to the SD Deep Striker, next to the Converge Deep Striker, and then maybe next to the Fixed Figuration Deep Striker would be pretty cool. Could be like a, take like a huge display base or a huge display case to put all that Deep Striker in. I did uh, review a while back the Ace Hobby 1144 scale Deep Striker, but that kit was just terrible. It sucked. I don't even know if I'm even gonna finish that as it is, I might just use it for parts for making some other sort of custom or something. Model Comprehend also recently put out a uh, Cubelay Mark II. Now, foolishly I forgot to mention that in the last Gumpla News video, but um, here's just a couple pictures of what the kit looks like here. 
When I built the original Kubele from Model Comprehend, I thought it was a really cool kit. Uh, I thought it looks much better than the Bandai version. Just the proportions and the details and everything looks really nice on it. It does have some problems with uh, articulation and just the fact that I wasn't able to get the kit to stand at all on its own. Um, but it was still a pretty cool looking kit and this one looks pretty cool too. Um, there are some things that I think look a little bit goofy on it. Um, the head and the cannons on it look pretty cool but the huge uh, tail binder with like the 500 um, basically funnel bits in there looks kind of a little bit overkill, a little bit ridiculous. And also I found that the effect parts for that didn't really work all that well like unless you want to like permanently attach the funnels onto the effect part uh, which I didn't really want to do for mine so I don't know I guess if you're just gonna have it like to display and you want to permanently attach those on there I mean you, you could do it and it would look cool you can make it look really good but just I didn't want to do that at the time when I built my cubile so I didn't but um, yeah I don't know that looks pretty cool and I've been thinking about buying it but I don't know. Then next, John Poon asks, what is your favorite model? I've answered that uh, many, many times now, so I'm just gonna, sorry John, pass that for now. I think you already got your question answered already. And then next, Goose VF187, uh, just shout out to him, you guys, check out his channel again. Uh, a while back, he sent me some stuff, so once again, thank you a lot for really uh, sending me that stuff. He asked me, how long have you lived in Korea? I've lived in Korea for about three and a half years now. Um, yeah, three and a half, three and three quarters. Um, yeah, I lived in Korea for two years, then I went to Japan. I lived in Japan for a year, then I've been back in Korea for about a year and a half now. So, yep, that's that. And then he asked, how big is the Gunpla community in Korea? Are there local shops? Um, it's growing, I think, recently, but still, it's not really all that big. But then, of course, there is a lot that I just probably that I'm not really privy to. Um, I am in one uh, Gunpla group on Facebook here in Korea, but I don't really participate in it a lot because I think um, usually when I post in it, a lot of times I don't feel very welcome because a lot of times I'm posting in English. And I know like a lot of them don't understand English um, and like. But just very rarely, sometimes I post it in Korean, and basically, like half the responses that I get are like, "Whoa, there's a foreigner in the group," instead of like anything constructive at all. So I don't know. It's understandable, but I'm just not very active in it. And I mean, I just I look at it sometimes to see what other people post, but it's basically just the same thing as every other Facebook group in English. Just everything's in Korean. It's the same kind of stuff that people usually post. Um, I don't know. When I get to doing a couple of the interviews with some Korean modelers here, I'm interested to ask them what they think of the Gumpla community in Korea, because I think they're probably much more knowledgeable in that. And if there are local shops, yeah, there are local like toy stores, not particularly model shops, but there are just like local toy stores that sell Gumpla, but the price is really high. It's like really high, really marked up, just because it's just a small shop that doesn't specialize in that. Um, and then you can actually buy some Gunpla at like some local marts, which would be like big marts, something similar to like Target or Walmart, or something like that in, this, in America. Uh, here they actually sell some Gunpla as well, but it's also kind of marked up. The best bet is basically just online here in Korea. If you live in Seoul or a larger city, there are a couple shops, but basically the biggest shops in Korea are just like the official, like they're called Gundam Base. They're kind of like the official like Bandai shops. And uh, in Seoul there are a couple of other smaller shops. One of them is um, where we'll be going in one of the interviews because I'm going to interview one of the guy who owns the shop. And so we'll take a look at his shop later. And then the other one I've mentioned before is called Hobby Factory. That's where they do like some of the prism coating on the kits. I showed that prism coated uh, Master Grade Ball a while back. Uh, that shop is really good. They basically sell the kits for exactly, pretty much exactly their list price, uh, which is good. It's basically uh, the cheapest that you can get them here in Korea, I think, is from that shop. So I recently, on a trip up to Seoul, I bought a couple of kits there. Uh, so that shop is pretty good. Next he asks, what's your favorite grade of Gunpla to build? Um, I, I don't know. It's not really so much about the grade, just if the kit is nice and if it's something that I like. I mean, 
I guess I would probably have to say master grade, but I really don't build all that many master grades. I probably build more 1144 scale than uh, master grades, but I don't know. Just because I've said master grade in a previous video, I guess I'm just gonna have to say master grade again for that. Next, CS asked, do you speak any other languages other than English? Well, uh, in high school I studied Spanish for four years, but I can barely speak any Spanish anymore. I can understand it all right, a little bit, but can't really speak all that much. And uh, I can speak some Japanese and some Korean as well, just from, uh, I studied Japanese in school, and then also I lived there for a year, and then Korean, uh, like I said, I've lived here for like three and a half years, so I can speak some Japanese and some Korean as well. Neither of them fluently, but both of them good enough just for like basic conversation kind of stuff. Next, uh, Syed Mohammed asks, will you be doing Gunpla tutorials anytime in the future? And as I uh, answered this already actually, because he was one of the winners from the contest, as well as Anderson, the first question for today. Um, as I answered before, yes, and as you've probably already seen by now, that yes, I have already started that series, so some kind of tutorials, and then I plan on doing plenty more kind of tutorials in the future. Then for the last question of the day, this is coming from Knight Yuki, uh, asks, what Gundam should I start with if I want to start customizing a kit? Now, this is a question that I kind of see asked uh, quite a bit as to like, what uh, Gunpla should I start with for like my first kit, or what should I start with for a first painted kit, or in this case, first customized kit, and basically, how I would answer any of those questions is just get whatever you want, really. I mean, there's all the kits are, I mean, generally the same. If you want to start customizing a kit, I think probably a kit that's very angular or has a lot of flat surfaces is going to be easier than something that has a lot of curves and a lot of intricate shapes like the Shinanju. It would probably be not a very easy kit to customize because it has a lot of curves and, like, on the chest and the shield has a lot of, like, uh, fine details that you would have to work around or something, I don't know, like the original RX-78 or a, a GM, something like that would probably be the easiest to customize. I mean, uh, you can find millions and millions of customized GMs um, just online. Uh, but basically, I would yeah, just look around for some inspiration on some blogs and forums and stuff. Just try to look around for something that you like and uh, just Try to get an idea in your head and figure out, okay, is this something that I'm comfortable doing at my current skill level or something that I think that I can do if I'm willing to try some new things and then just go for it, I guess. So yeah, basically um, your first one or two or three or four or five kits might not really be exactly what you want, but uh, every you'll find that every time uh, it gets better. So it's same for customizing, painting, anything. Basically, it just you get better with practice, so you just kind of have to go for it. And so that might even be a good idea to just get like a few cheap kits uh, for your first attempts at customizing and just kind of work with it, figure out like uh, what works for you, what you like doing, and then uh, so then later you can try it on some more expensive kits maybe, and you'll be much better at it at that point. So. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode of Q&A. I hope that was enjoyable and, and or informative for you guys. Once again, I'm sorry about the echo. I'm going to try in editing. I'm going to try to work on the sound a little bit, but I'm not sure how I'm really going to be able to do it all that well. Uh, I am planning on getting a lavalier mic, so it would be like just a mic I can clip on my shirt here. That'll improve the sound quality, I think. And also, just once I've actually got some furniture in here, that's going to help reduce the echo as well. So anyway, that's it for today, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.